Number 10. Te Ching Zi. Te Ching Zi, a Taiwanese American performance artist, is finally receiving the recognition he deserves for his groundbreaking work. Thanks to praise from Marina Abramovich, he is now experiencing a renewed surge of attention and interest. Xi has been hailed as the master of long-form performances thanks to his unwavering dedication to exploring singular thoughts or actions to their fullest potential. By creating role-based pieces, he pushes the boundaries of human endurance. Xi's journey began when he jumped ship while working as a seaman and sought refuge in New York using performance art as a means to express himself and escape the challenging life of an undocumented immigrant. Through a series of year-long performances, he subjected himself to confinement in a wooden cage or tied himself to fellow artist Linda Montano, faithfully mirroring her every move. His time clock piece, One Year Performance from 1980 to 1981, involved punching a time clock installed in his downtown New York studio every hour on the hour for a year, immediately capturing one frame of himself and the time clock on 16mm film. Xi's unparalleled commitment to his craft and unwavering devotion continue to inspire awe even today. Number 9. Ragnar Kajarkinson through the skilled use of irony by Icelandic artist Ragnar Kajarkinson, the seemingly unremarkable and predictable nature of modern Western life can be seen as a captivating spectacle. This prompts us to reconsider the importance of ordinary existence and seemingly insignificant events. For example, by elongating the four-minute song Sorrow by The National into a six-hour live performance solely dedicated to that song, each word and note gains heightened significance. This also applies to the exhaustion, excitement, and tearful emotions experienced by both the musicians and the audience, creating a profound impact. In the artwork, scenes from Western culture, everyday activities such as dining, swimming, and domestic life are depicted collectively, with each individual action serving as a unique instrument in a magnificent symphony. The execution of beauty lies in the misconception of banality within our repetitive lives, offering each of us a reason to discover this beauty in our own seemingly mundane worlds. Number 8. Wu Sang Identity and performance are intrinsically linked to the point where separating them becomes nearly impossible. Even when the physical presence of the performer is removed from the equation, there is an unmistakable personal touch and an immediate impact that surpasses that of other fields. Wu Sang, in an unprecedented manner, expresses identity by venturing beyond the confines of binary categorizations and delving into the realm of in-betweenness. Through this exploration, Sang captures facets of otherness within LGBTQ culture that extends far beyond mere visibility. Going beyond superficial examinations of identity and appearance, Sang strives to embody the comprehensive social reality experienced by those who do not conform to the dominant social mold. Through her artistic endeavors, she sheds light on marginalized communities that have not only been appropriated for cultural gain, but also forced to live in unsafe conditions and face vilification in their everyday lives. These communities include migrant Latin queer communities in Los Angeles, the history of persecuted queer culture in China, and the black and brown ballroom culture of New York. Number 7. Nick Cave Throughout its history, costuming and physical visual alteration have played a crucial role in performance art. Nick Cave has elevated this aspect to extraordinary levels. With his sound suits, which can be appreciated as remarkable sculptural wonders on their own or come alive through grand dance spectacles. Initially created to conceal outward makers of race, class, gender, and so on, these suits and the resulting performances undeniably evoke both ancient and modern rituals. By fusing elements of fashion, textile art, dance, and large-scale conceptual exhibitions, Nick Cave 
effectively showcases the inherent versatility and multidisciplinary nature that are inherent in the art of performance. Number six, Adrian Piper. Adrian Piper's groundbreaking experiments exploring the connection between individual identity and societal perception have had a lasting impact on performance artists. Her influence extends far beyond the realm of performance and has greatly shaped the practices of artists working with conceptualism, feminism, and minimalism. By examining how society interacts with and perceives individuals, Piper creates her most significant works around the themes of passing and the complexities inherent in it. Early in her career, she encountered galleries that assumed she was a white male based on her name, leading to disappointment and confusion when they realized she was a woman of color. Piper responded to this by incorporating performance art, assuming the persona of a black presenting male in works like The Mythic Being or rejecting participation in all black exhibitions, which she referred to as ghettoing. She even went so far as to retire from being identified as black, instead identifying as a shade of gray to reflect her one-eighth black ancestry. Number five, Anna Mendieta. Anna Mendieta, a Cuban-American artist, had a tragically short-lived career, but her impact on the art world has been enduring. She employed the body and its relationship to the surrounding environment in a way that positioned herself as both the subject and object in a larger narrative. Drawing inspiration from her nomadic life story, Mendieta's work in Silueta vividly captures the upheaval experienced by migrants. Through photographs of imprints left by her body in the earth, the focus shifts to the absence rather than her physical form. Additionally, her artistic exploration delves into the violence inflicted upon the female body as she pressed her face against glass, questioning the concept of self-portraiture and transforming her body into a tool akin to a painter's brush. Mendieta consistently challenged her own internal identity and the incongruity between how her adopted home perceived her, often resorting to lightening her skin and hair. This highlighted the double disadvantage she faced as a woman and person of color living in the United States. Number 4. Yoko Ono Yoko Ono, an artist widely embraced by popular culture, is perhaps the most famous and yet least understood figure of recent times. Her connection to performance art stems from her deep involvement in the music world and is crucial to comprehending her artistic approach. Starting from her early days of playing the piano, her musical background greatly influenced the quality and style of her work, particularly in composition. In one of her early and ongoing series, Ono creates small performance pieces consisting of simple instructions that anyone can recreate at home, akin to reading sheet music. Through this approach, Ono explores a welcoming and seemingly effortless form of participation that celebrates mundane actions, prompting us to reflect on the extent to which we choose to invest ourselves as artists and individuals. One of Ono's notable creations is the Wish Trees, which exemplify her activism, emphasis on social inclusion, and the power of collective effort. Since 1996, these wish trees have garnered immense public engagement, with millions of handwritten wishes being collected. This demonstrates the widespread impact and participation her work has achieved, making it one of the most significant artistic endeavors to date. Number 3. Marina Abramovic Marina Abramovic has played a significant role in the recent surge of popularity in performance art, enabling it to reach a broader audience than ever before. Starting in the 1970s, her artistic endeavors, particularly her collaboration with Ulai, captivated the public's attention due to their intriguing, shocking, and highly celebrated nature. Through her work, she challenged and prompted unfamiliar audiences to reconsider their entire perception of contemporary art. A pivotal moment in her career was the landmark exhibition The Artist is Present at MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, in 2010, where many individuals came face to face with her and her art for the first time. 
This encounter led many to explore her previous remarkable accomplishments, such as walking the Great Wall of China to symbolize the end of her relationship with Ulai, as well as her ventures into dangerous situations that showcase powerful emotional and dramatic revelations about human nature. As a result, Abramovich has become widely recognized as a prominent figure in contemporary art, and she deserves recognition for bringing conceptual and performance art to a more diverse and extensive audience than ever before. Number 2. Vita Conci Vita Conci, an American poet, performance artist, and architect, played a significant role in the emergence of the performance art movement. His influential works, such as The Notorious Seedbed from 1971, have secured his place in the annals of art history. In 2005, Marina Abramovich reenacted Conchi's performance. The original piece involved Conchi positioning himself under a wooden ramp in New York's Sonnabend Gallery, where he engaged in eight hours of daily self-pleasure over a three-week period. He broadcasted his fantasies through a loudspeaker while spectators walked above them. Reflecting on his early work, the artist described it as a variation of minimal art, albeit with the use of his own body. Aconchi was born on January 24, 1940, in the Bronx, New York. He obtained a BA from the College of the Holy Cross and an MFA from the University of Iowa's writing program. In the 1980s, he transitioned to sculptural works and installations, including furniture. In 1988, he established a group of architects and designers bearing his name, specializing in designing public buildings and projects. Aconchi also had a career in teaching, having held positions at institutions such as the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, the Cooper Union, School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and Yale University. He resided and worked in Brooklyn, New York, until his passing on April 28, 2017, due to a stroke. Number one, Joseph Boyce. For many artists, it became almost expected to view their life both inside and outside the gallery as a continuous performance, much like the majority of performance art today. However, this notion arguably originated with one of the pioneers of performance art itself, Joseph Boyce. His artwork, much like his life story, revolves around a never elusive quest for meaning and truth intertwined with fiction. This can be observed in his piece titled, I Like America and America Likes Me, where he shared an open gallery space with a coyote and a perplexing assortment of props, causing a stir in the art world of that time. This pivotal moment in performance art prompted the question of whether artwork should have a definitive and ascertainable meaning. Thanks for watching.